uh, welcome back uh, students so i guess i am audible and uh, visible to everyone and uh, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, coming back again uh, uh, miss anuradha ma'am actually uh, i really appreciate your uh, valuable time spending with us because i know you are very busy with uh, actually helping the patients and uh, saving their lives uh, and in your busy schedule you know having your time with us is really uh, appreciable ma'am i know it's very tough to manage all these things and thank you very much for uh, engaging our students and uh, enlightening with your knowledge ma'am thank you so much and uh, so yes. uh, shall we continue yes ma'am we can continue i will stop sharing this yes. and uh, yes ma'am ma'am in the last session there is a query from uh, um, mr zayed yunus sir uh, sir is requesting oh, okay. about um, can you tell about what strategies are employed to manage infectious complications after stem cell transplantation in pediatric patients uh, sure so normally uh... not even for that matter not even the pediatric patients uh uh, norms, uh, uh you know uh, assume that post transplant this could be the infectious diseases that can uh, uh, the patient can uh, get infected uh, this disease and in advance they start before the actual infection occurs the doctors start giving uh, the medication to you know uh, uh, to the patient so that uh, like you know the patients may not have that infection or at least if it occurs the intensity of the infection will be less gvht we don't know what will uh, happen uh, as a part of gvht gvht can uh, attack the patient's liver for that matter or maybe the lungs whatever like uh, i know one case of a patient wherein the patient had uh, the fungal infection in the lungs during his chemotherapy sessions uh, while he was undergoing chemotherapy for aml in that case uh, after medication the before transplant the fungal lung infection was clear but after transplant when the patient's stem cells were not increasing doctors had presumed that this patient will have uh, his fungal infection back because of course number one the cells uh, the donor cells will not engraft immediately and will uh, take some time to you know start reproducing the cells so in that case doctors had already uh, given the medication to that patient prior to the transplant so that you know, the patient will already have the protection with uh, available in his body uh, to uh, you know face that infection even after that like a post transplant the patient had the lung infection but of course because the medication was given in advance the infection the amount of infection or the intensity of the infection was very less so this is how normally the doctors treat tackle uh, with the infectious diseases number 2 uh the transplant happens in separate units they are all like isolated uh, this uh isolated unit called bone marrow transplant units where the patients go inside that unit the patient is adult uh the patient has to stay all alone the patient is pediatric the patient's mother is allowed with the patient to stay and the mother then is not able to come out until the child is in the bone marrow transplant unit and whatever uh, uh, food and all is given is completely sterilized so that is how and uh, the water that the patients consume uh, like for taking uh, for bathing and all uh, it is uh, uh, clear through ultraviolet rays so that is these are the some of the precautions that uh, are being taken to you know uh, ensure that the infection does not happens ma'am i'm feeling uh, my personal thoughts ma'am i think uh, managing patient during uh, conditioning is more tougher than actual treatment i guess keeping the patient alive during conditioning process uh, yes i know i know because uh, during the conditioning the child uh, the patient has to undergo radiation therapy also in many cases so radiation is one of the tough thing that the patient has to undergo chemotherapy has its own side effect 
but radiation further going ahead for the radiation aggravates the side effects and in this uh, time the patients have uh, lots of ulcers in their mouth they are not able to gulp anything at the same time they feel you know very thirsty and heat throughout their body i have seen the patients who are lying down throughout their you know uh, bmt stay in just diapers they are and the ac is full on i mean the, the ac is working at its maximum capacity but still this patients have really facing issues you know to cope up with the heat generated because of the radiation yeah. and ulcers is another problem so yeah Ma'am, and uh, uh, any other queries, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, do we need to do um, conditional therapy for donors, ma'am? No, donors don't have to undergo conditional therapy. Donors have to undergo their health check, wherein uh, we do certain blood test. Blood test includes the IDMs, that is infectious disease markers, to ensure that they do not have any infections which may be passed on to the patient, okay. and the hematological evaluations that we do. To ensure the donor's physical fitness, a uh, donor's uh, fitness, and following to that, we do the basic body imaging test uh, prior to the donation. So that is what the donor has to do. And after that, like before the five day, uh, four days of the donation, the GCSF injection is being administered to the donor for peripheral blood stem cell transplant. If the donor is to donate bone marrow, then no GCSF is administered. Okay, okay, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, and one more. When when we collected peripheral blood from the donor, do we yeah. need to do irradiation? Even though we have checked the markers, we have screened the donor blood. Still, do we need to do irradiation, ma'am, to the yes, blood normally, packet? Yes, normally. Uh, some it depends. Again, like you know, uh, we along with the blood stem cells, we sub give the samples to the hospital where the patient is there. So. Upon performing the test, if they found find anything suspicious, uh, the irradiation is done in some cases. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. I think I think this is very very tough and sensitive matters, ma'am. I guess uh, the chances of successful engraftment, the chances of patient coping, chances of. Hmm? Or oh, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I I can vouch for. <clears throat> Uh, I, or I can say about the patient's mental condition, you know, uh, we are meeting so many patients and um, I had a case in my family also. Uh, so, like, you know, uh, the patient in my family was diagnosed with AML at very young age. And uh, mm -hmm. that is what, uh, I mean, now the touch wood, now the patient is doing well. Uh, he underwent the transplant. Uh, actually, uh, let me share it with you. Otherwise, like I'll be sharing it afterwards also. It's my husband who was diagnosed with AML at the age of 34 years. Uh, and he oh, underwent bone marrow uh, blood stem cell transplant 15 years ago at CMC Vellore near Chennai. Okay. And uh, his donor is Italian donor. So I have seen all these processes. I have seen and as a family, we have suffered. So, and I know what was my husband's mental condition, you know, before the transplant, when the transplant was, I mean, once the cells were transfused, the cell count increase and all those th issues were there. There were so many issues that we faced. And uh, I mean, uh, that is why, like, I'm able to, you know, talk about the psychological and physiological issues and all. I really appreciate, ma'am. I, I know how much, uh, you know, burden you are going with it. I, I really don't know, ma'am. I'm speechless. <laughs> yes. That's what, by now, uh, he's doing well. Uh, oh, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yes, I mean, because we, uh, my husband has two sisters, one brother. No match was found. In fact, one mm -hmm. sister and one uh, brother were matched internally, but they had no match with my husband. Uh, mm -hmm. Our son was like uh, about four years of a five years of age at that point of time. We got his HLA typing done, but unfortunately, it was it also did not match. So we were looking for donor, and that three was not there at that point of time in India. It had okay. just started, so we had no Indian donor database to help my husband so but like we were lucky we could find a donor in italy although it was 
9 by 10 match. HLA report is 10 factor report. I'll show you how it looks. So uh, it was a 9 by 10 match, but uh, in a way it was good for him. And uh, the factor which was mismatch uh, was good for my husband and it was not of that important. That was that. Okay. That's what uh, the physician told us. So okay. yes, I mean, uh, ultimately it happened. The donor agreed and donated and it happened. But we know how uh, before we could find a donor, my husband had a relapse. And uh, that was the toughest time. Because we had no donor, we had uh, uh, we didn't know what will happen once uh, and when he he had a relapse. Doctor told me that no, only it's only twenty percent chance that he will come out of this My relapse. So uh, once he came out of relapse, uh, doctor told me that I uh, know since it's uh, we are doing transplant after after second relapse, only thirty five percent are the chances that he will survive. I said it's bigger than 20%. So, I mean, and we have no choice. Like, we have to do it. And uh, my husband also fought bravely. So, I'll share some pictures uh, at the nice. time of, you know, the <laughs> workshop. So, you will get to know more, better sure. about it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. We'll continue. <laughs> so, continue with the session. Yes. Uh, uh, MCQs, I mean, some of the questions based on the session that we had uh, earlier. So, uh, students, uh, you can answer. Uh, which of the following is not a common indication for HCT in pediatric patients? Yes, students. Ma'am, it would be nice if we share the questions, ma'am, in the screen. Uh, can we share the PPT or? Uh, you are not able to see my screen. One, uh, no, ma'am, we can't oh, see. I'm sorry. One second, ma'am. Let oh, me. I'm... No, yes, no, no. I'm, I'm sharing it. I'm so sorry. Yes, I thought you were able to see my screen. No, no, ma'am. <laughs> okay. And now you're able to see? Yes, ma'am. We can see, ma'am. Perfectly. Uh, yes, students. Everyone, please uh, answer this MCQ, students. Uh, the first MCQ, I hope you can see. Which of the following is not a common indication for HST in pediatric patients? Not a common indication. Leukemia, sickle cell disease, cleft palate, thalassemia. Yes, students, any idea? To my knowledge, it is cleft palate, ma'am. <laughs> students? <Correct>. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, the donor selection is crucial because? Yes, students, please answer, everyone. You can stare at your mobile screens. You can see the question over there. Donor selection crucial in pediatric HST because? The answer is yeah. minimize the risk of GVHD. Okay. Yeah. So uh, again, depending uh, as we already know that you know the blood group can be different uh, between the donor and the patient. But if the blood group is same, again the risk of GVHD is reduced, and there are many more factors which are being considered. So I am not that expert, but of course. All that, that I know is uh, consider, uh, this is considered, taken into consideration to reduce the risk of GVHD. Okay. And third question, then, role do child life specialist play in pediatric HST is to? Role do child life specialist play in pediatric HST is to? Providing psychological support to children and families. That's right. Thank you, Faith. Thank you. Uh, next question is uh, suitable source for stem cells for infant is? Suitable source of stem cells for infants and young children is? Um, cord blood. Why? Very good. Um, cord blood is uh, rich of supplies of stem cells and it also has a lower risk to cause the rejection to the uh, G GVHD or seven. Right. Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much, Faith. And uh, I'm happy that you're listening to me and answering the questions. Thank you. Uh, my next question is, uh, uh, what is encraftment? 
in context of pediatric HCT? You can answer, type your answers in the uh, chat box also. What is engraftment in context of pediatric HST? To my knowledge, it is C, the, the establishment of transplant right. of stem cells in stem, uh, child's bone marrow. Yes. Correct. Yes. Uh, then, yes, uh, potential effect of late effect of pediatric transplant, which can be the effect? Potential late effect of pediatric HST. Can you open? Secondary yes. cancers. Secondary Sorry? cancers. Correct. Hmm. Thank you, Faith. Okay. So now let's have case studies wherein I would be looking forward to answers from you based on the previous session. So first case I would like to discuss with you is a six-year-old child diagnosed with the ALL. So the case is the child's medical team has recommended HCT as a part of treatment plan. So what should be the steps involved in the donor selection and the laboratory test requirement to access the donor recipient compatibility? Six-year-old child. So what type of or what could be the ideal source of stem cells for this child? It's a young child. Yes, explain the steps in one day, donor selection. Ideally, we will try with kin first. When the kin right. is not available, then the closest cousins. Right. Parents and cousins. Before that, the child's own umbilical cord cells. Yes, a cord stem cells, cord blood cord stem, cells. stem cells. So uh, normally many, whenever like I conduct awareness sessions about Datri, many people ask me that should we preserve our child's cord cells? I say yes, you should. If you can afford, you should yes. preserve. And I mean, I would recommend if you cannot, and, but I, I would recommend if you can, you, if you can manage. Yes, ma'am. Actually, even Swam sister also told us about that, but the only issue is that it's too expensive. That's right. Uh, but, uh, you know, like uh, with the current lifestyle, uh, there are so much you know, cord blood cells are not only like, you know, uh, as I had uh, talked in my first session also, it's not only used for blood stem cell transplant also. It is also helpful in many lifestyle diseases such as, you know, like uh, the uh, diabetes, childhood diabetes and all. So, and then there's some heart disease which are treatable through this cord cells. So, definitely, uh, I think now it is not costly. If I'm not wrong, uh, latest, uh, as per my latest knowledge, uh, now these blood, uh, this uh, stem cell banks or cord blood uh, cell banks are charging around 70,000 to 1 lakh rupees for uh, for storing the cells for up to 18 years of uh, the child's age. So that is fair enough. Like, I mean, I know uh, like taking out or sparing 70,000 to 1 lakh rupees at a time is little too high amount, but you no, know, one can plan. Ma'am, like, 70,000 per month or per annum, ma'am? Per annum. No, it's uh, one time. It's oh, only one time. One time. That's right. Most probably it is one time only. Uh, probably they'll be charged. They might be charging some nominal charges then per annum. But at the time when you want to preserve it, they are charging somewhere between seventy thousand to one lakh. So, so uh, one a, lakh is for uh, up to eighteen years, ma'am. Yes, that is what I know. Okay. Because uh, yeah. So uh, I mean, but please be careful while choosing the uh, cord blood cell bank. Because I have heard in some cases, uh, the conditions under which the cells are preserved is not good. And beyond 18 years, uh, some companies are saying that you should preserve furthermore, but it is not recommended because then the viability of the cell reduces. So uh, beyond 18 years, it is not recommended. 
all right ma'am ma'am uh, will they cover any other interest or when we, will we get any other benefits ma'am like it's like a, it, it looking like an sip to me okay, will i get no like uh, like interest will we get any interest like uh, you know is it possible they, they are not doing in in a financial way no ma'am this is only for preservation i think we won't get yes. any interest no no no, no. fixed deposit like interest no nothing nothing understood but, uh but you are like uh saving it for your child's future understood if god forbid, if god forbid but if your child needs then understood. probably yes understood yes. and uh, like uh, in some cases uh, where actually the blood stem cell transplant from unrelated cord blood cells have happened people after you know okay. beyond 18 years people have donated their cells so you can do good without actually donating your stem cells So Understood. that is there. All right. Yeah. So, uh, donor selection uh, for the pediatric patient involves the HLA match matching to reduce the risk of GVHT. Then, um, the loci HLA A, B, C, D, R, and D, Q loci are matched uh, for uh, you know doing the HCG. And uh, the goal is to find the donor with the closest HLA match. to the patient normally for uh, thalassemia uh, non malignant diseases where the patient can survive um, in case of like thalassemia or sickle cell diseases where patients are able to survive uh, with blood transfusions monthly blood transfusions doctors prefer 10 by 10 hla report matching for transplant but for the malignant diseases in some cases 9 by 10 and in rare case i have seen patients undergoing transplants with 8 by 10 match also i know one of the such patient she is in now chennai and uh, when she was diagnosed with leukemia uh, she had no match but then she was transplanted with 8 by 10 donor and uh, now she is running she was transplanted about 15 years ago 14 years ago and now she is running marathons in chennai so yes i mean success is possible there also number 2 the second case study uh infant with severe combined immunodeficiency so the medical team again recommended at city uh, so why cord blood cell uh, they have recommended umbilical cord blood cell transplant as uh, or as the source of stem cells so why and uh the procedure of uh, involved in cord blood cells at banking and testing so this is very interesting case so again uh, the disease is non malignant so normally in non malignant cases uh doctors advised such parents to go for another child which could be an hla matched child these days even the techniques are available that you can have a child before actually the lady conceives you can have a hla matching embryo which is then implanted in the lady's womb so uh, uh like in that case the couple is if the couple is advised to go for a second child which is hla matched then the choice is given because to reduce the risk of gvht again the child can survive with help of some medication and blood transfusion because this is non malignant disease and the laboratory procedure involves uh, once the second child is born the blood banking includes the collection of the stem cells processing and cryopreservation so until the child is uh, the first child who is diagnosed with the disease is ready for the transplant all these processes are required so i would add one more thing blood banking blood bank selection is also important here in india specifically so uh, and testing involves the hla typing and infectious disease screening before the transplant actually the transplant occurs right case 3 long term follow up for a teenager at city survivor so 16 year old child has already undergone at city for sickle cell disease again it is a non it's non malignant disease but it is genetically passed on disease so uh, the patient is transitioning to adult care now after 60 when the patient will become 18 years she he or she will uh, become uh, adult so explain the importance of long term follow up care what is all required 
what are all the follow ups required periodic screening right long term follow ups in world involves the laboratory test includes cbc immediately the cbcs are very much important then the assessment of organ function because there can be some side effects of hct so organ function assessment is also required uh, screening of secondary cancer is also required in some cases like even after 5 years the secondary cancer like um, as i give you example of my husband my husband was warned against having uh, possibility of having skin cancer so after one year when he started going out for work and all he used to ensure that he would wear sunscreens he would wear full sleeve clothes and he would try, try to you know keep himself as much uh, covered as much as possible so this was all uh, the precautions were being taken for him and of course the regular psychological support is required uh, for this children and uh, uh, that's all so i would now like to share some datri case studies uh so sorry i'm so sorry uh, it's here so uh, samyukta was about like seven, eight years old when she was found to be a match with uh, vipin gupta so as you can see how your hla report will look like so samyukta was diagnosed with thalassemia and uh, vipin vipin gupta uh, found to be a full match with her and uh, after vipin gupta trans uh, donated his stem cells this is when the vipin gupta and the samyukta and samyukta are meeting each other for the first time after the transplant so when transplant when the donor donates his or her blood stem cells according to world marrow donor association guidelines we are not allowing the donor and patient to meet each other even we do not disclose the identity the patient family gets to know donor's age and gender and the donor gets to know the patient's age gender and the diagnosis that's it and after one year of transplant if donor and recipient wants to meet meet each other we allow them to meet in a press conference or we uh, organize online co calls we have started this since the time of covid so this is how like we are uh, managing so uh, again uh, these are all pediatric blood stem cell transplant survivors uh, I, will, uh, i will show the video of uh, two of this uh, transplant uh, the recipient and the donor meet next is the video like i think i will play it uh, in my uh, laptop only Yeah. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, ma'am. We can see. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Let's we'll start playing. I got my son after ten years. इतनी बड़ी खुशी के बाद एकदम ऐसी चीज जो आगे आई तो एक पल के लिए तो ऐसा लगा जैसे लाइफ इज फिनिश इसने मुझे मेरा बेटा वापस किया मन में बहुत खुशी है कि वो कौन ऐसा है जिसकी वजह से हमारे बच्चे की जान बच आई डोंट नो इज बच्चा इज बड़ा वो ठीक इज ही और शी इवन दैट आई डोंट नो बट वो जो भी है ना बस मैं तो उसको एक बार हक करके यही बोलूंगी आई रियली लव यू रियली I never felt that I'm going to save somebody's life. Uh, sir, someone has mentioned in the chat that they are not able to see the. Yes, ma'am. Actually, we are unable to see the video, ma'am. It's. Uh, oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry. 
no 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 actually it's my bed no 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 that's my bed i should have uh, like wait i'm uh, sharing the screen again and uh, yeah panchita had her transplant in november of last year and is going to start wait 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 uh, stop share Yeah. Or you can share the whole screen, ma'am, full screen of computer. Or shall I proceed with the? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me try once again. Yes, ma'am. Try once again. Oh, uh, share screen. Yes, ma'am. Now. now, yes, yes. Okay. Now. Uh, sorry, ma'am. No, ma'am. It's a, still your desktop view. It's not the video. It's only icon. Okay. Just, hmm. Is it? Uh, so in that case, like what I'm doing is I'm uh, like uh, putting uh, this. Uh, let me try. I'm not able to share the whole screen. How can I do that? Ma'am, you can, ma'am. Uh, oh, when you click sharing, you have that whole screen option, the first option, screen. It's written as screen there. Uh, just a moment. Uh, and also, ma'am, you need oh, to click. I mean, like when I. Or shall I, uh, ma'am, send me the video name, ma'am. A doctor gives lives to. Ch you have sent me two YouTube links. Uh, no, uh, the second one. Second one. Second, second. one video. I oh, WhatsApp. I, yeah. Oh, one second, ma'am. Let me cross where uh, donor uh, recipient meet. One second. Right. I understood, ma'am. I, I will share this now. You Everyone can see now. Yeah. Everyone watch this video, students. I'm sharing. Mm. Yes. Go through this. This one. Or just a second. Same. I got my son after ten years. So, इतनी बड़ी खुशी के बाद एकदम ऐसी चीज़ जो आगे आई तो एक पल के लिए तो ऐसे लगा जैसे life is finished. उसने मुझे मेरा बेटा वापस किया. बहुत ही हमको क्रेज है बहुत क्रेज है उसको मिलने का मन में बहुत खुशी है कि वो कौन ऐसा है जिसकी वजह से हमारे बच्चे की जान बची आई डोंट नो इज बच्चा इज बड़ा वो ठीक इज ही और शी इवन दैट आई डोंट नो बट वो जो भी है ना बस मैं तो उसको एक बार हक करके यही बोलूंगी आई रियली लव यू रियली but do not have a family match over the journey which got me is our journey to make a more more for people that uh, i try to educate people about the process of our donation and how important this is i never felt that i'm going to save somebody's life uh, the balance was saving a life and thinking about me so uh, i think this was heavier definitely I was surprised. It's very rare. What I had known, even when I'd given my sample, that it's very rare to become somebody's match. So I was very surprised to find that out that I have ended up being somebody's match. There was an opportunity, and I had taken it up. And then I met Kushal today. It feels so so good. So good. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. you can stop this video later yes, on you yes. can share the link i wanted to uh, talk about uh, the donor selection part over here 
so uh, fate uh, when fate was while fate was surviving with uh, blood transfusions there was a time when his body started rejecting the blood uh, transfusions also in that case the blood stem cell transplant was must in his case so fate was diagnosed with thalassemia so in that case uh, dr sunil bhat in the video as you had seen had requested Naval to donate his bone marrow instead of blood stem cells. And because already Fateh's body was rejecting the blood transfusions, so blood stem cell was not of use. So uh, Naval was requested to donate his bone marrow. And Naval Chaudhary is from Kerala and he registered, he was working in HSBC when he registered. And uh, he is the first bone marrow donor in India who donated his uh, bone marrow for Fateh and saved Fateh's life. So uh, this was one of the case that I wanted to discuss with you about the donor selection. So again, the patient's condition also uh, important for the source of uh, donation uh, or the source of stem cells, which can be either peripheral blood stem cells, bone marrow or your uh, cord blood cells. Uh, one second, this... ma'am. Uh, students, if it is ended, please join again with the same link. Maybe the session will continue for five more minutes. That's it. Okay. Please uh, uh, join back after one minute, students, if it is ended. Yes, ma'am. Right. Uh, so, the other video is about a doctor. So, since this meeting is going to get over, I'll uh, talk about it uh, in a while after showing the video of the doctor. I will end this meeting and please join again, students, everyone. I need all 46 participants again, okay? I'm ending this meeting and please join again. We'll see you there. Yeah.